Ah, oh, Hailsham, a place where the silt flows free and water floods into any and every crevice it can find. This site has been used from the Paleolithic right through to the medieval and is about to enter another phase as a green space primed and ready for a swathe of new housing far too expensive to afford and far too badly built to be worth the asking price. Nonetheless, in this episode, I'll be taking you through the process of digging two large, large, large slots. Slots? Slots. And showing you the realities of being a commercial archaeologist, albeit a very bad one at that. This week, we were excavating the activities of residents that lived in Hailsham over 2,000 years ago, the Romans. Here is a map of the site. Here you can see the various squiggly lines of the natural or virgin soil as it is visible at the surface. And in amongst that, you can see the fun, fresh and funky ring ditches, gullies and pits that have been dug throughout the various ages by all of Hailsham's best known residents. But nonetheless, the slots that we dug, if my memory serves me correctly, were here and here. We began our week by digging the first of our two five metre long slots in pairs. We worked from the known to the unknown, as is best, as is what most archaeologists do meaning that we started from what we could see as the edge of the natural or the cut back into the pits following that cut. Right, so this is natural. So it's coming down here, come down here. So really your best bet rather than that, if you want my advice, would be to work backwards from the natural. Yeah. Um, because we haven't got an edge in a normal sense because we're doing a sondage work from what you know so that edge is slightly exposed what I would do personally uh, I'm not the boss, um, is get a mattock and start taking that back we thought the natural was gypsum to begin with because it was white it was very much like gypsum but apparently according to a local geotechnician later on it was just in fact silk and the reason that we believe these pits were mined by the romans is due to the pottery that we found which was some very gaulish looking samian which is a type of subpar roman pottery sold to the primitive britons by the gauls because the pottery here was horrific before that however as is the case with most archaeology the minerals that the romans were mining we do not know early on one of my co-workers a very lucky lady found what looks to be a mesolithic hand axe which was one of the main items that um evidenced human activity pre five six thousand years ago and flint doesn't naturally occur in the geology of this site so it has to have been brought here by somebody needless to say my later flint finds weren't quite as impressive not that we're comparing although this little flint flake that i found in a spoil heap was quite fun nonetheless i spent the next couple of days or rather most of the week shoveling and wheelbarrowing soil from the holes to the spoil heaps, which incidentally came in the form of backfilling old pits. It was difficult at times to distinguish the natural from the fill because the miners had basically backfilled other pits and stuff with natural that they'd already dug out many hundreds of years ago, thousands of years ago. So that made it a bit difficult for us, but you know. Once these holes were dug, we found the natural we got rid of all of the fills and we cleaned these holes to within an inch of their life. They were gleaming white, they were beautiful. We began the process of recording. Once your hole looks publication ready, neat tidy edges, flat vertical sections, beautiful. It is time for the photos. So you have to prepare a little board. It has the site code, the cut number normally, and a north arrow because people need to know where the orientation of your hole is and where your section is as well as placing appropriately sized scales by your hole vertically and horizontally to give some people an idea of the size as Stephen told me a photo is not really a photo if it doesn't have the scales once this is done 
making sure that you can see the section clearly because we don't want all the sun shadowing the nice fills that you have. It is time to draw your section. When I talk about the sections, I mean like a cross section of your trench, essentially. So you're gonna have like various fills in there, various layers of soil, possibly. Or maybe just one or two or three or four or five however many, you have to normally set up a string line unless it's a small hole on level ground. Then you set up a tape measure along and use a smaller tape measure to normally measure incrementally 10 centimetres along kind of like the profile of this section. So you measure the top, the base and every single fill or layer of soil. And you draw this on a section board, basically doing a dot to dot with the measurements. And then you have to give every single layer a number as well as your cut. This was quite lengthy because we had to essentially draw like 10 meters worth of sections. Normally you only draw one section of a hole but we had to draw both sides of these two holes and they were five meters long each so that was a joy and a half. But as with everything, once these masterpieces had been created we had to do the paperwork which I'm not going to put you through because it's tedious and as with everything you must label your hole with care, with the cut number, just so people don't get confused. But yeah, that's pretty much the process of digging a hole. And then you begin that excitement and joy all over again with a new hole. 